Welcome to the Rockman Podcast, the weekly podcast brought to you by Rockman, the running and fitness challenge brand for those with a deep desire to test and further their limits and live a healthier life with fortitude. At Rockman, we provide the challenges, sportswear, content and community to inspire action within you to push your body, strengthen your mind and achieve your next level of health, fitness and well-being. You can sign up free at www.rockman.co.uk. If you'd like to be notified about new podcast releases, then be sure to hit the subscribe button below. And if you take any value from this podcast whatsoever, give me the thumbs up or leave me a review or a comment. Podcasts by nature are very much one way. Um, we, Me and my guests will speak, you listen, but there's nothing coming back, rarely. So in order for me to know which ones are good, which ones are bad, please let me know in the comment section below and it will help me to improve the podcast going forward. I'm Terry Rosman, Rockman founder, and I hope you enjoy Recording in progress. Alex Gribben, welcome to the Rockman podcast. How are you doing today? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. You will have to excuse this tan. I have literally just come back from being in Greece. <laughs> it's my proper British tan, which is all good. But yeah, mate, I'm very good. I'm very good. How are you? How are you, Terry? I'm very well as well. Hey, do you know what? That was going to be my first question. Fantastic tan. I can see the glow <laughs> through the screen. My, uh, my Mrs. Becker is, is a lot, lot better. Like she goes, like she just spent the whole time on the beach. I actually was in the gym a few times. So it's like, a couple of like random mornings where I was out of it whereas um yeah she is literally like fully like fully in bless her yeah, yeah just on the beach or next to the pool it was tanning up yeah that type of holiday so we've been like we haven't obviously won't be away in like three years with this lockdown so it's that's actually been booked since 2019 and just rolled for three years <laughs> yeah it's crazy <laughs> yeah which has been mad um yeah no it was really good really really good Enjoyed and you were in the gym I suppose to take advantage of the air comp right <laughs> Get more, yeah, exactly. More, more out of a like, um, I always say to my clients, like a, a big thing, and obviously we'll dive straight into this, is like mm. um you should always keep the pot simmering in some capacity. So a lot of lads find it quite difficult because they'll they'll go full out and then they'll do nothing, or or when they've got a really busy week, they go, Oh, if I can't do my five to you know six sessions or, or even four, you know, whatever whatever you're training that, they'll do nothing. And I think for me, it's like I always hate, I don't know about you, but like um say whenever you have a week off the gym or week off exercise, not even just the gym, like general exercise. So like getting out for your steps, go for swims, doing runs and stuff, all that type of like like when you have a week off that, the week after that Monday, you just feel like shit. And then also, um, can I swear on this, Terry? I don't, I don't, of course you can. Swear yeah, away. Yeah, that's the shit. Um, and then on that Monday as well, it's really hard to get back into it. Whereas I always say to my lads, like no matter what you're doing, if you can find three, even like 30 minutes like an hour and a half out of a 168 hour week, like just to tick over, it's always going to make your life easier the next week. Um, so yeah, that's the only reason I train on the holiday really, just to keep your sort of headspace in it. And then also like, it's just like you say, a bit of, you know, sweat out, a bit of good fun. We're drinking and eating a lot. So it's some form of counteracting that. It will never will, but it's some way to counteract that a little bit. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, always, I always find a nice baseline is um, just get your steps in. Even if yeah. you're not going to train, just get your 10,000 steps in. That's, that's, that, that's, that's your base. Yeah, it, it, like, you know, like a lot of us, a lot of my guys. So do you want me to properly intro what I do? I suppose that makes In a minute, sense. in a minute. Yeah, I've got my list of questions. I've got my list of questions. So a lot, of my, a lot of my lads obviously work in offices and they're quite seated. And that's sometimes, you know, one of the things we tick off. We're like, look, if you're not going to be able to get your sessions in or you end up having a really late night at work, find the other things that we can do. And like you said, the steps is a massively, it's, it's, it's a low hanging fruit. Like, you know, get up and walk around. And once you hit your 10K or you, whatever your sort of set as, then yeah, it's easy really, isn't it? It's easy. Well, as a coach, you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll definitely know this, but uh, it opened my eyes that um, it was explained to me is that um, a, like a training session, say, 30 minutes to an hour of your day yeah. makes up only a small percentage of the calories that you burn mm -hmm. a day mm -hmm. and it's is it neat is it your neat yeah, um, yeah. like non um exercise training you'll burn you'll more burn you'll burn much more. more yeah you burn more in your sleep i think than you would in like a like a like a 30 minute run or something i can't remember off the top of my head what it is but it's something similar to that just because of the way that your body is actually like metabolizing calories the way that it's actually going through things it's like um you like like, you like there, there's, there's loads of other process not no sorry neat is non-exercise activity training not not no um, that's I, it I'm wrong so like and, and and there's loads of other, like tde so it's like total daily energy expenditure like there's loads of other things that i try and get my lads to think about rather than just thinking about like oh that that's the only thing that's burning calories mm -hmm. and as well right another thing that i 
I fucking hate, okay, I absolutely hate watching blokes walk on a treadmill or even like anybody in general. Obviously, I only train men and, and we'll sort of come on to that in a minute. But like watching, watching people walk on a treadmill, I'm like, what is the point? Like, why? Go and go, go and take those 30 minutes and do your fucking groceries. Like go and go and go and do your shopping. Go do something more productive than just sit on a treadmill. But it's because it's like, oh, well, it's in the gym. So it's ticking that box. And I'm like, that's not actually what the purpose of that is, though. You've got to consider that, like, if you just go out and go for a walk in a nice scenery with nice surroundings, one, mentally, it's going to help you. And two, like, you're still getting the same activity levels. Um, Or, like, find something you enjoy as well. I think that's the biggest thing is, like, people look at, like, their total daily energy expenditure and think, like, oh, it's only going to have to be if I'm doing a 45-minute gym session. It's like, well, no, not really. You could do 45 minutes of what you enjoy and then the rest of the day you could do yes just yeah exactly. yeah it's mad. <laughs> yeah well yeah, other, talking about the tread do, do you see the people on the treadmills where they they put the whack the gradient up to like i don't know five or six percent yeah. and then they're holding yeah. onto the bars so they're yeah, leaving okay. like yeah what, yeah i don't get it what's the point in the gradient then if you're just yeah, going to hold onto the bars like, or like or like you might be like i don't know you're like you're like they're doing hill walks and then you're like do you want to actually go up a hill like do you want, do you want to go up a mountain like no no oh, no 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 well bike. yeah but, like, that's what? my wife she hates hills yeah, she, hates, yeah, yeah. she she struggles she, she she hates going up the stairs I mean, but I'm, hey we... all, all well and good though like you know I, I'm, I'm very much of the example of like you do you so if people do want to do that obviously i'm not saying don't but in my mind it sometimes doesn't make sense as i tell you what actually the, the way to coin that is that if you're not enjoying it don't do it if you are enjoying it and you love walking on trauma you love putting your hands up you do what you do whatever you want but if you're not enjoying it and then you get frustrated there are other ways is what i'm trying to say <laughs> no, no, and it's perfect because if you don't yeah. enjoy it you're yeah. going to quit you're going to stop yeah. you, you have to enjoy it for for, for, long, for longevity um i also got on my list here chicken gyros chicken gyros so, chicken gyros you went to greece right yeah, yeah, yeah. Gyros. Did you get the chicken gyros, gyros in? I yeah, yeah, like a gyros. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, we had like an all-inclusive hotel. So they do like, oh, mate, it was absolutely nuts. As I say, because this has been booked since 2019, every year, like whatever they are, Jet2 have come to us and been like, right, you can't go on holiday. But if you stay and you keep the money in this account, we'll put this on. So like it, it went from like, I don't know, like we we're like self-catered in like 2019 with like the cheapest thing ever to then it ended up being like a five-star hotel like early board and like every everything was just covered by the end of it because that every year they've just gone oh if you stay with us and don't cancel it we'll add this on and i'm like oh okay okay so um yeah we had like nine restaurants in the hotel that were all inclusive and then like one main restaurant and it was like a gyros restaurant so i had like unlimited like you could get like loads like skewers kebabs everything like little burgers like mixed grills which is absolutely brilliant um yeah mate it was so good it was so good like greece is great to be fair because it's only like a four hour flight so it's not ridiculous and they're only two hours um ahead so it's not like you come back and you're completely jet lagged but then it is like you just sit on a beach and like it's nice weather and yeah it's brilliant it's brilliant it's gorgeous it's a gorgeous place so now we can kick it off the introductions alex so (laughs) can you explain to the listeners who you are and what do you do I, uh, I um, train dolphins for a living to make sure they breathe properly. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, try, I was trying to think then what, what I used to say when you're in the Marines and you say like random jobs, uh, underwater firemen. That's, that's it. That's what a lot of people say. Um, <laughs> my name is Alex Griffin. I am a, well, I suppose I'll go for a few different things. I'm a heavily dyslexic young lad who was quite bullied at school. Uh, 2014 to 2019, joined the Marines and I was in the Marines for five years. Um, end up four five so like four five commando then end up getting pinged for drives went down to Albion spent two years on board a ship left the marines in 2019 and um, started originally it was a personal training business and then obviously a lockdown sort of happened and then I went into actual consulting and coaching and we now run um, I, I, I say the best way to describe it is a fitness consultancy and specifically around just men who are struggling with focus clarity direction in their life and ultimately they want to sort of understand exactly what to do and create focus and purpose but at the same time you sort of build upon their own mental and physical processes whether that's their mental health whether that's their mental wealth you know whether that's setting targets for their own fitness and in general create a happier life that's one of the biggest things I really want to do with what I do it like as a coach and the business that we run really is to create happier men 
because I think that's a big thing, especially over the last sort of couple of years that's really dropped. And that is all I do now. So I don't do any personal training or any boot camps or any of that sort of stuff. It's literally just this consultancy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's me in a nutshell, I suppose. That's yeah, well, that, that's why I had to get you on because um, I saw yeah. your Instagram, I was following it for a while. And then as I learned a bit more through the posts and such, I was like, what you do is basically aligns perfectly with what we're trying to do with Rockman uh, or be it in a slightly different way the yeah. aim is the same it's it's um helping men and women um yeah. to just yeah better their lives but not just through fitness and health but also the mindset and understanding that yeah. the mindset is the most important thing to focus on well we sort of talked about didn't we at the start of this like before we came on like but having a goal and, and having something to work for and not just doing fitness for the sake of it is one of the biggest things that's going to help people because like we talked about already so like i think what happens very often and this is what i mean about i can talk to terry i'll go into you, you go for it you go for it when when people don't have a set structure or they don't have a set reason why they're training and, and health and fitness is such a broad spectrum of stuff that you can do what very often will happen and i see this very often with a lot of the blokes that have joined me is that they'll sort of try to get into some form of training or some form of going to the gym and, and the low hanging fruit and the easiest thing to do is to walk on a treadmill or it is to do a couple of bicep curls not very well and actually that's not what they enjoy so eventually they, they just give up because there's no sort of purpose behind it you know like we're not we are not seeking final destinations as people like that's just not what we do like we're not seeking an end state like you know like it doesn't matter what you've done if you've pass out the military, run an ultra marathon, like, you know, we're talking about Ben, he's an absolute, you know, unit running marathon de Saab. Like, it doesn't matter when you do finish those races or those achievements, you aren't just going to go, right, I'm done now. I don't have to ever train again. It's the progress that we seek. And that's why I think a lot of guys struggle with is they aren't seeing any progress. And actually, even it doesn't matter what the end destination is, it's that they're not seeing anything towards something because they don't even have a goal to work towards. So mm -hmm. then that's why they give up. And then, and then that's when, that's when I, I find a lot of my guys will slip into very, you know, very quickly, it's easy to slip into really bad habits, a really bad direction of your life. And, and ultimately, for a lot of lads that I know that are, say, you know, single guys, or they've just had a divorce, which is actually what we deal with quite a lot at the moment, or guys that have gone through, you know, all sorts of different physical and mental problems, when they aren't training at all, because they don't have any set goal or any set focus, or they just don't think they're going to make any progress anyway, those bad habits come into play and it's very quick like you said about the mindset and the mental health side of things to go the other way you know that there's a there's a massive I, I won't go too deeply into it because I think I'm not 100% informed to really talk about this but there is a massive problem in this country with you know male suicides at the moment and I think that a massive tribute to that is the fact that, that it's it, it's loss of hope like it, it, it's not having you know when you're not working at something or you're not going towards something or you don't have this painted out purpose of a future and you think that the situation you're in is always going to be like what it is and you start going downhill you know and it gets worse or you think it's going to be worse that's that hopelessness that that, that, that sort of just goes that way um but yeah I, I think like you said it's great because it sounds like both of what we do is very similar which is fantastic really mm. um but yeah yeah perfect and it is it is a slippery slope it's like an exponential sort of uh, slippery slope mm. is when, when you when you lose that sort of identity i suppose that focus yeah. that meaning that purpose of what you're going to which i truly believe is so important to us as human beings and especially men yeah it, yeah it, it does just get it gets worse and worse and worse very very quickly you've got to nip it in the bud as soon as you can and, it, and it's not even just about like doing a couple of bicep curls or like you know like doing a couple of burpees it's, it's not about that it's about like the, the biggest thing that I find that when I first take on lads is when they've, they've had no purpose, they've had no structure, they've had no reason to go to the gym or not even go to the gym because I think people think that's the only way to make, you know, physical fitness improve. Like even just doing something active and they've done none of that the whole week, you know, I, I have conversations with a lot of guys who aren't in the program and the cycle is they come home, you know, you don't, you don't go, oh, I'm not going to go for a run. So I'm going to do something more positive, like eat salary and, you know, whatever it's, it's come home, have a couple of beers, have a couple of pizzas. You know, if, if you're a single bloke, it's very easy to slip into a really negative habit of where like, you know, all sorts of other things come into play. And like you say, like it, it's such a slippery slope downhill, but also the other side of that is like, you're not releasing any positive endorphins. You're not releasing any sort of, um, you know, you're not pushing yourself. You're not, you're not actually seeing this kind of feeling of your emotion spike and then I think that's what a lot of guys deal with is like they're not they're not at any point in the day feeling happier 
so constantly they're in this depressing state and then they're not able to really you know work up about it but I mean, I could go full hog terrier on the fact that, you know, if you want me to. Um, so I, so to give a bit of context of why I sort of like talk about this. So I did a course um, that I, you know, obviously I've invested in a lot of coaches myself. And I've, I've actually had, I can know, I've had five over the last two years now of different people. So one of them was a guy called Dan Hancock, and he runs um, a coaching program which helps personal trainers and, and consultants become mental health and exercise coaches. So that's something I really went into because I wanted to really help my guys. So a big thing they talk about and that is that it's very easy nowadays to be just prescribed medication or it's it's very easy to be prescribed you know um that type of that type of um way to to stop things so it's like oh i I feel i feel depressed i feel anxiety i feel all these things coming along and here's a load of drugs and it's like okay well that's not really the solution to the problem is it like you have to understand there's a bit deeper in that and now what i want to just clarify before anyone sort of calls me out on this and i hope no one clips this up because there are certain things that mental disorders, so I'm not talking about mental health problems because there is a difference, mental disorders that need, you know, drugs, therapy, and, you know, full on, like you, you need a doctor to come in and actually deal with that. Like when you look at certain things that, that are actually chemical responses in the brain, yes, that is a mental health disorder and that is a completely different kettle of fish. However, I would, I would go as far as to say the majority of people who are suffering mentally and the mindset, like you said, the purpose side of it, especially a lot of the blokes, well, pretty much 100% of the blokes that I deal with, because, you know, I, I wouldn't, I would refer them out to someone else if I, if I didn't, it, it is about mental health problems. Now, mental health problems, just like um, health and fitness problems, are mainly self-induced and mainly are able to be cured or not necessarily cured, dealt with. Um, just like you would if someone was, say, starting to get obese and overweight and they were eating all the wrong foods and not moving enough consistently, it would be, oh, if we change the direction of what you're doing, it will change the way that you, A, respond physically. It's the same I find with the guys who've got mental health problems. If I change what they do on a daily basis, mentally they will start to improve. Um, but yeah, I can give a really good example of that. As I say, Terry, I can talk for English. Crack on, crack on. Yeah, so like one of my clients, um, absolute hero, like he won't mind me saying this because this is public. So we've talked about this A on one of my pod, like sort of podcasts slash, um, you know, kind of kind of different processes. So it's Chris Lewis. He, he was an absolute fantastic client. First came to me. Um, he, he'd been, you know, gone to the doctor. He'd been given, you know, medication. He'd been given other things to sort of go away and do. And it really just didn't work for him or it did. It didn't. It might have worked in a certain manner, but it didn't actually work in the sense of it was sustainable and able to really take him to that next point. Now, what all I did, very simple things, very simple things. Chris is a very busy bloke. He's a, you know, um, like does tax returns. He does a lot of those things. Him and his his dad run a business. First thing I did was said, look, let's try and get your organization on point because a lot of guys don't realize is that when you've got a mental health problem and you've got all this stuff going on and you've got all this madness and you don't feel organized, of course you're gonna get anxiety because you don't know what's coming next you know you're thinking fuck i've got all this shit going on i've got all this random stuff coming at me so a big thing that we really looked at with chris is let's get you organized first let's get you clear on you know even like tidying up your workspace i know the huge thing in the military is obviously discipline and structure and just actually having a clean environment you know i, I don't know if ben mentioned it or like any of the guys you've mentioned that are um expenditure as well like they always used to say in the navy like a, a clean ship is a, is, is a happy ship and although it is a bit of a Chad saying, it is true. Like if you've got organized spaces and you've got uh, clarity about everything, you know, we had a talk with the other guys about it the other day and I said about, it doesn't just have to be actually cleaning. It could be like, is your email inbox fucking with 50,000 emails in it and you don't have a clue what's coming in or what's going out? Like, do you understand your finances? Like as in, you know, it, it, do you actually know where your mortgage is? Do you know where your car finance is? Do you know if you're in debt if you're not in debt do you know what these things are because if you don't of course you're gonna have stress and anxiety you don't know what's going on with it so if you Mm. clear that up you know and you just actually look at it head on just like most guys do so that was the first thing i once i got chris organized that that changed his life completely just to begin with like you know actually saying let's let's do boom 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 
let me know when it's done and that's all good. And then the second point was to just give Chris, like you said, a proper routine and structure and aim. Like his main aim was just lose two stone. It was like in the next 90 days, let's try and get you to lose two stone. Let's get you to the point where, you know, you keep that ball rolling and let's make it as enjoyable as possible. Um, so like he loves his tennis, absolutely loves his tennis. And like I'm not a tennis coach, but I know that if you're physically fitter, you will be better at tennis. So that was, that was a huge thing we just got him to do was literally like, right, we just want you to look at your tennis game. Where's your, where's your current ranking? Okay, how can we get that to improve? Oh, if we actually were lighter on our feet. And then, like you say, when she, once they gave him that aim and that organisation, it was like, oh my God, I actually enjoy fitness now, rather than, like you say, just jumping in a gym and, and lifting a couple of weights for the sake of it. It was like, let's have a proper structure and aim. And like, you know, he, he literally came off his medication, doesn't have to, you know, doesn't have to go through any of that sort of stuff ever again. And that's been brilliant for me because it's, it's literally over three months, completely changed his life. And it was like just a case of giving him, like you say, organization, structure, discipline and a proper goal. And then getting him to sort of get into certain routines of his health and fitness every day that just made sense. Like they make sense really, which is brilliant. Loving that mug. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that's my father's. It's not mine. His lordship. Oh, mate, <laughs> um, I got two things off the back of that because uh, you must be aware of Jordan Peterson as well. Um, yeah. 100%. And he, yeah. It, one of his big um, points he makes is uh, clean your room. That, that's yeah. his first thing is clean your room. And what he means, obviously, by that is before you go and tackle the world's problems, you need to make sure that your life is in order because um, you're not going to be able to do it. If you're if you're living in chaos, you're yeah. not going to be able to go and sort anything out um, from the oh, outside of that. I had, a, I had a fantastic mentor. So really lucky, like my, you know, full disclosure, my dad, um, my dad ran a great business. So he used to run a, a motorsport business. So I was incredibly lucky as a kid, like. And I actually got sent when I was, well, I say incredibly lucky. I was a bit of a shit of a kid, but basically I got sent when I was 17 to like a military prep college. So it was in, I used to live in, like my parents live in Oxford. I live in Devon. Don't worry, this is going somewhere. Okay. Um, parents, <laughs> I, 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 I tend to do this. My parents live in, um, I got sent off to Devon for two years and lived there. And I had a mentor called Di Phillips. He's actually, um, uh, he was uh, at the time uh, just leaving as a major in the Royal Marines and he's an MBE. Um, so he, he is an absolute legend. And he always told me like, you imagine, right, if you're if you're waking up and you're late for work and you've got a really messy room, there's fucking shit everywhere and you, you, you've got to try and find your car keys in a rush. If you don't know where your car keys are, how difficult is that going to be? Like, it's going to be mad, isn't it? You're going to be like, oh, my God, I don't know where my car keys are. And that's going to cause you stress. It's going to cause you panic and it's going to cause you unnecessary energy wastage. Now, if you wake up late, which which can happen, right? And what I, the reason I'm saying late is because there's a certain amount of pressure there is what, what we happen and we happen to have in life. But your room is organized. You know where everything is. Your keys are hung up next to the door. And the first thing you can do is wake up, get changed and grab your keys and go. How much easier is that going to make your life? You know, mm -hmm. and, and actually how much less pressure is that going to cause less stress? Now, the reason why he said that is obviously a bit of a, you know, I'll go into this, a bit of a full-on scenario. And I, I never actually served properly in any form of combat obviously I did a lot of training exercises but a lot of the the um, methodology and a lot of the processes they teach you is very similar to that is like if you live like a fucking pig and then the, that someone gets, shoots at you i.e you get shots coming at you and there's pressure there and you know you don't know where anything is you're fucked like you, mm. you are going to be that bloke who dies and then that means that you, probably someone else is going to die because they're trying to save you and ultimately you're just an idiot then because you've caused that issue Whereas if you live organized, you live in a disciplined structure and you live in a good manner, like if you know where everything is and it's clean, then it's going to just make your life a hell of a lot easier. I'm just going to turn Google. Yeah, on that's fine. There. I mean, um, obviously, that's um, that's an extreme example of where it could be life or death. But but the lessons stay true and the lessons yeah. can be carried into everyday life. I think that's a huge, huge thing, like Terry, that I do with my lads is like, I know, as I say, I never, never fired shots in anger, never, you know, never went through any full on those structures. What I do do is bring a lot of guys in, like obviously Oli Ollerton came in, you know, obviously I'm now part of the Breakpoint team, which is great. And like Ben Williams, who wrote Commander Mindset, and those guys talk about their military experiences in Afghanistan and stuff. But a big thing I try and teach my guys is that the reason why the military structure works so well and the discipline behind it is because you're training to operate under high pressure. Now, high pressure isn't necessarily getting shot at. High pressure in normal life is like, I've got a lot of lads who run really big companies, like really big companies. They're under a lot of fucking pressure. I've got a lot of guys who've got three kids. 
they're under a, probably a lot more pressure. Oh, like, tell me about it. I've, yeah, I've just had a second. I know exactly what that feels. You know, and, and, and when you've got all this stuff going on and, and also at the same time, you're trying to take care of yourself and your own health and fitness. That's what I'm trying to train guys to sort of have that um, mindset about is that, you know, it, it's like going to war. Like every time you, you, every time you're trying to get the kids ready for school or every time you're trying to get the kids like just breakfast sorted, like that is like a little mini battle. So mm -hmm. I always talk about it as if it's like that, like you can take exactly like you said, the, the structures and the disciplines and the um, methodology from training for war, training for those type of environments into civilian life. And, and what that really does is you operate on a higher standard than anybody else because you just you just work in a different manner. Um, but yeah, mate, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Well, I had um, a mental health practitioner on last mm -hmm. podcast, uh, Paul Regan, great guy, fantastic oh, wow. uh, conversation. Yeah. And he talked about sort of the nervous system and its responses to stress. Yeah. And he was saying that your body doesn't know the difference, say, from being shot at to compared to the stresses and pressures of everyday life. You may know, because it's different, but your body in terms of its response to the stress is exactly the same. Um, 100%. Yeah. Stimulus is stimulus. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter where it's coming from. It, it's a stimulus. Like, so I think that's the thing. Like if you're, if, if, if cause we deal with, we deal with shit every day. Like we mm. deal with crap every day. Like all of us do. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do. Like you can be a multimillionaire running a huge business which is probably actually a lot more stressful than people think and it's probably not as actually good as you, you would imagine or you can be like um you know anyone else you can be a normal person you can be anyone else like right and, and you're always going to deal with all this stuff and what's a great you know a, a big thing that a lot of guys don't really think about and don't really realize is when there is no outlet for that stress you are just storing it so a lot of my guys like what does happen and like you you mentioned is that like when they're not training in any sort of capacity at all and they're not having any physical endorphin release or they're not really, you know, getting sort of a positive energy out there, they're just storing stress and stress and stress and stress. And then no wonder, you, like you say, six months, 12 months, you know, a period down the line, they end up something going really, really wrong because it does it does cause that effect to it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's massive, isn't it? It's massive. I've just okay. realised there's an alarm going off in the background. Can you hear that, Terry? Or no? If not, don't worry. I can't it. hear it. It's all good. No worries. It's, we'll was it, it your we'll car alarm? <laughs> no, it's um, Google. So like my uh, Becca sets like alarms on Google. Um, it's to remind you it's about this podcast, is it? Yeah, probably. Probably. I don't know. It might, <laughs> Did you want to turn it off? So Did you want to uh, turn it off? Right, right. Uh, I got a point here because we were talking about purpose and responsibility and that uh, it reminded me of something. And I think it came from, it, again, Jordan Peterson. I listen to a lot of his stuff. Very, very good guy. If you don't, if people, listeners aren't aware of him, go and listen to his stuff. Um, but one question and he talks about is people ask, uh, why do you do drugs? Right. Why do you do? And there is a point. I, again, I'm going with this. Why do you do drugs? And he says, that's not the question you should be asking. The question is, why don't you do drugs? Yeah. And it, I mean, it's not just drugs. We can apply this to eating junk food or drinking or just or general anything. not doing anything, laziness, play. And it's like, why don't you do that? And the reason is because you have responsibilities. It's because you have a family to look after. It's because you have bills to pay. Um, and what, and this is the thing, when people lose that meaning or focus in their lives, that's when they will go and do drugs because it's or, or, or you know or heavily junk food or drinking whatever it is because there's nothing stopping them do it because there's nothing to aim for this this higher purpose that is when people can easily slip into those things so it just stresses the importance of having a goal and something to aim for in life well the biggest thing i think is like imagine okay imagine if i an easy way to sort of describe it imagine like with yourself or just with anybody imagine like if you were going to work and you got there and your boss just went, just do whatever the fuck you want. Just do whatever you want. There's no schedule. There's no set direction of where we're trying to get you to finish or go. Um, during the day, just, just do whatever the fuck you want. Like, you know, turn up whenever you want. Like, um, yeah, at, take lunch break whenever you want. Like, if you want to fucking wear absolutely no clothes and come in naked, do what you want. Like, and, and, and imagine- Because I'm like on a job. Mate, you might, well, you imagine that type of office, though. Would that office be productive and get anything done? Like, realistically, they had no goal. They had no set standard of work. I know people are going to go, oh, yeah, but Google and this, that, and the other. It's like, yeah, they still have a standard of what they need to do. 
like would anything actually get done if they had no purpose and it's like the realistic the reality is it might but a not in a focused capacity and and actually not in a manner that would work and b it might not be productive so that does happen when a lot of guys like you say they don't have responsibilities they don't have an actual structure to follow or necessarily any accountability to have to do that it can then be like you say a, a purpose of like just do anything so therefore that is what they do mm. and there's know, no right? fulfillment and then, yeah but, yeah that's there's no fulfillment. Thing, it slides into a, a completely different manner and then actually there we go i can pause this on my phone um and then what actually then happens is that ultimately like it it, it, it becomes norm like we all know right so like the the, sli- the steps to oh, hell this is going to be deep the <laughs> steps to becoming a drug addict aren't done with like right you're a perfectly working normal man um, and then next minute you're on heroin and you're on the street. Like it's not, it's not like it might be quite quick in the sense of like to get there, but it's not like, oh, it just went. It's little chunks of things that happen. So it's little things that sort of like trickle away. And I'm not saying everybody's going to get to that point. Like just because you have a couple of beers every night doesn't mean you're going to get to that point. Like I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying though is that it, it, it just becomes this sort of normality, doesn't it? It sort of just trickles down. Mm. And that's kind of what, I feel like happens with a lot of guys either way like it's either like they take the the little tiny steps where it ends up going wrong and it just becomes a custom over time or actually what I say to a lot of my guys is like the opposite of that like a resilient positive you know mental health um, you know in, in a good manner like a positive mindset isn't built by one single individual act it's built like you said over taking layers off that fear taking layers off that limiting belief like and Middleton talks about it quite a lot in his podcast like taking layers off each individual thing will get you to that point but that has to be done over time like mm. a lot of guys just like in the gym right people people get into the gym and they think oh, I'm gonna get fucking shredded overnight and like you know I'm gonna have a six pack and this that, and the other and it's like well, realistically, that's not how it's going to work. You're not just going to go for a couple of weeks, sort of semi, you know, go as like go 24 seven for seven weeks. Uh, sorry, um, a couple of weeks and that be it. It's done over time. It's like built into it. It's accustomed into it. And I think like that's just that's just the, the biggest thing I try to teach my guys from the off. Like this isn't just something we want to focus on. Like my program now is a, a minimum commitment of six months. And it's the aim is actually ultimately 365. So a full year. Now, a lot of people might think, fucking hell, that's quite a long time. But realistically, like, if we, if you live into 100 slash 80, like, that is, if, if you say 100, that is 1% of your life. 1% mm-hmm. of your life. And potentially, if you are going to live to 100 and it's 1% of your life at the middle of it or at the quarter of it, which majority of the lads are probably about there. I've got a couple of guys who are in their 60s. Then actually, if it changes the direction of the other 50%, then it's probably worth doing. But anyway, the, the long and short of that, what I'm trying to get at is that once you immerse yourself in that process and realize that it isn't just going to be a quick fix or it isn't done overnight and it is actually something you have to gradually take layers off that will be the direction towards positivity but that happens either way terry doesn't it like it can happen where you've got two examples like a couple of beers every night that one percent like john peters talks about it doesn't he like that one percent downfall you Mm. don't just get there overnight and actually the one percent up is also done the other, either way like you don't become a beast over one meal and you don't become as fit as you poss- possibly can after one workout but it's, um, it's yeah that's the thing because we were saying it's an ex- exponential decline uh with yeah. the bad stuff but it's also an exponential increase um if you're doing yeah. the positive stuff and it doesn't have to be groundbreaking it can just be small steps one percent that's all you're aiming for just improve yourself one percent every day and you'll be miles from where you started uh, at the end of it i want to ask you alex and what led you to the military okay so, so where so were me, you explain yeah cool. give me your background where were you right, what led so you to the military i basically um i i when i first sort of went into school like uh, it was brought to my attention that i'm very heavily dyslexic so i used to have big fat john lennon glasses on that was one of the biggest things i used to remember at school and like to be really honest I was at primary school. I didn't really realize at the time, but looking back at it now, I was quite heavily bullied or teased or put down by a lot of different groups of people. One of the biggest things that happened when I went into secondary school is my English teachers pretty much just said, like, you are going to fucking fail. Like, that is, that is, that is pretty much, like, not in those Cheers. terms, but like, um, that was pretty much what I, I knew would happen. And like, and sort of that kept going and going and going. And like, I think the biggest thing for me, and I look at it back at it now, and there's a great saying, isn't there? Like, if you judge a fish's ability to climb up a tree, you're probably going to make it look like it's an idiot. 
Um, so like I hated school basically, and I just I just really didn't enjoy it. Wanted to get out as quickly as possible. Went into like Burton's, which was like you know like a clothing shop. Um, and I, I had absolutely no fucking clue what I was doing with my life. Everyone was off to university. Everyone was off, you know, very academic levels of people going into this sort of format. I had pretty much failed. Well, I failed my GCSEs. I did fail it. I got a D. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about that in a minute. And then basically I got C's and everything else. So there was, there was not really much opportunity that was going to go into another direction. And I kind of pretty much feel like a lot of people had written me off at that point. As I say, I was, I, I'm, I'm not you know, working in a clothing shop is absolutely no problem with that. But for me, it was almost as if that was what I'd just settled for. Now, I sort of started forming the idea of joining the Marines about 15, which is actually for a lot of lads joining the Corps, probably quite late, because normally you can, you know, you can get in by that point and started sort of really thinking about it. Um, I went into, as I say, like Burton's and there was a couple of lads there that actually were like, yeah, I'm going to join, I'm going to join. And it was like, oh, okay, oh yeah. Um, and then, and then I was like, right. So, you know, um, actually luckily got given quite a bit of money from my granddad or sort of someone who passed away at the time. So that was sort of handed down, put just shy of sort of, I think it was about 10,000 pounds into this military prep college and then went off and it was like, you stayed there, boarded there, lived there like for two years. Um, and then I, I sort of didn't really know what military unit I was going to join. I just kind of knew that I wanted to join. Um, because I felt like for me, like there was a lot of people when I first initially like mentioned it, that was like, oh, no, nah, don't do that. Like the Marines is for like the top of the top. You'll never be able to do that. And it came back to my mind when that English teacher had told me you won't pass your GCSEs, you won't really do much. Mm -hmm. um, and it just kept that cycle kept going around in my head. And then I used to actually work in a box factory when we we're on kind of our summer break as well. So I had a pub job while I was at college and then I worked in a box factory as well. Um, mainly just to sort of get money for college really. It wasn't anything like mad. Like my parents, as I say, my parents did fund it as well. They did help. Um, but in short, it was basically like I, I kept having this constant battle of people saying like, oh, you won't be able to do that. You won't be able to do that. And I, I got like during during college, to be fair, got laser focus on the idea that I was going to like just literally give like a big fuck you to a lot of people. Um, so initially it was like oh, I was going to join the army as a chef and then die, as I say, naturally himself being an ex major was like, nah, you're pretty fit. We'll get you into the Marines. Um, and, that, and that was it, really. It was like that whole, you know, that escalade of going from there. Joined the military uh, 2014. Um, I actually ended up getting injured after week 20. Went into, well, I say injured, I, I failed one of the tests. So I failed the rope climbs on bottom field. Then I went into Hunter Company for seven months. Um, and that was absolute fucking bollocks. It was shit. I <laughs> uh, hated that. Um, it's just it's just like being in prison that like you're just going round and round because you're not really getting anywhere. So you're not getting anywhere in training, like as in progressing, but the time is still going by. So then you're kind of just sort of sat in limbo, which is just absolutely grim. Um, I remember like one of my corporals came on and did a did a chat for my guys the other day and he talked about he went and turned to her and it's just it's just so shit like it's just like full of people who don't really want to be there they're kind of just treading time because you are still getting paid um, it's not very much bearing in mind but like yeah it's, it's just it's just like I hated that anyway and then eventually got out of that went into proper training again um, finished my 12 weeks and, and then passed out but what had kind of led me to, to join the Marines especially is like a, it is, it's obviously like the Green Bay is quite prestigious and it is, it is like the hardest infantry training, not the hardest training, but the hardest infantry trainers in the, 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 the sort of um, entry level. And then also for me, it was just, it was just like, I was just good in my hands. I was just good at running. I was good at that type of like that skill. I wasn't very, you know, I wasn't fully academic. Now I'm not saying the Marines aren't academic in any way. Like they are, you know, some of the most thinking professional soldiers, but like for me, it just it just really, you know, ticked the boxes of what I wanted to do. Um, I actually went and redid my GCSEs in the Marines and got a C in the end. So I have got all my GCSEs, but um, yeah, so that was funny as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> what was, like, what like, was yeah. the funny story? You said you had a funny story about your so, so it was basically like while we're, at, that was it. It was like while we're away on ship, I pretty much was like, oh, what can I do? So I was away for a year. So I did, um, did four years. So I obviously the year in training pretty much by the time I ticked all those other boxes off a little bit more than a year. Then I went to um, four five, which is in Scotland, um, so like a mountain training um, unit, and that was quite good actually. Went to Norway, did um, loads of other training exercises like mountain trainings, uh, Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia, that type of like those type of exercises um, for two years, and then went down to ship. And then the last year, so last year of being the Marines, like a um, I don't know, it's, I, I won't mention anyone's name so that it doesn't put it into a bad book, but like it was basically me and they call him a padre. So it's like the church, like the guy who um, runs the church on ship. 
um, which not it's not like a church as in like a like people are probably thinking there's like a massive spire. It's just a room. It's just a room that like is the church. Um, but yeah, basically like it, it, you go down and do it with him. So I spent like a couple of weeks going through it. But on the actual day of the test, I remember being like, uh, as I say, no no one's going to know who this was, so it's completely fine to say. But like I remember being like writing stuff out and going, would that make sense? Is that uh, all right? And he'd be like, um, he just walk past and go, ah. Oh, not very nice weather today, is it? I don't think that's the right weather. Or like, or like, and <laughs> fine, there's no windows in that room. There are no windows in that room. Or he'd be like, or he'd be like, oh, yeah, this is fantastic, son. I think this is great. And like, obviously, that, that's <laughs> kind of the way I did pass in the end. Like, I did actually pass on the GCC, but um, yeah, that was kind of when that got through. With, with, a, with a little help from our Lord. Yeah, exactly. There we are. Exactly. So that was, that was, I remember, I remember finishing. I ran my mum. Oh yeah, I have got my English like finally because I took. I think I took it in in like as a civvy or in school. I took it like three or four times and failed it each time. And my parents just kept because you have to pay after a while, didn't you, for your, for, to get it redone? And my parents just kept paying. I was like, I just can't fucking do it. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I, I think I got into the Marines on a like you, you, I can't remember what they're called. It's not a GCSE, but it's kind of similar. I don't know what um I don't know what you call it. It's like a MVQ uh, GMBQ, or yeah, or some some of that. Like that was what I needed in the end, anyway. So I just got that to get into the yeah. Tool. But um, yeah, what? that's a good story. Yeah, that, that's, what that's kind you... of what took on. Well, sorry, yeah, yeah. What 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 did you love about the military then? What what was it? I think, I think for me, like I, I I love I love I actually looking back at it now, did love the purpose, the challenge, and the fact that like when you when, when you're trying to get that, when you're trying to get a green lid, like you are so focused on that is the only thing that matters and it is like laser about what you're doing like like genuinely I, it's it's hard to recreate that as well it's hard to recreate that level of focus because like genuinely like hand on heart at 19 years old nothing else mattered like literally nothing else like I broke up with a girlfriend that I had at the time because I was like this is what I need to do like you know I remember like it was just purely nothing else would matter apart from standing on the parade square with a green bearer and being like, oh, I have earned this. Um, so I, I love that idea as well. I love the idea of like, you're so focused on that. And like, I did, I did when I first joined, love the idea of thinking like, you know, you'd be able to go to war, you'd have like experiences, you've had stories, you know, it was quite grand. Like I, I, so I sort of grew up where Afghan was going on and I, I remember watching like Commander on the front line and that was like chain watching that over and over again. Um, you know, I was really younger and that was kind of like, you know, um, what was it like not Terry Jones or I can't remember the guy, the guy did the documentary of it and he 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 did the commander test himself as well. And that just really sort of in my mind like cemented what type of bloke you were and like the standard it is. And yeah, I think I enjoyed that. And then and then sort of like the reason why I left, or you know, you go into like say four or five and um and sort of various different things happen there where it's kind of just you know, I did enjoy that unit and that was good. But then the problem with the military, sorry, the problem with the Marines specifically is they do have uh, is self functioning. So, for instance, like normal, um, the army will have like the paras are just the paras. And then they'll also have a support troop, which are made up of probably like a different unit from the army, which are their drivers or they'll have like a support troop, which are their medics. Whereas because the Marines is self-sufficient, it means that all jobs are covered by the Marines. So you could be a Royal Marine, but you're also a driver, or you could be a Royal Marine, but your main job role is like a medic, or you, I'm not saying medic's a bad job, medic's a good job, actually, one of my good mates is, or was, sorry. Um, but what happens then is you're kind of, if you're not proactive about what you want to do, and yet again, comes down to not having a goal set, then actually you can fall into a bit of a, you know, not a good line of work or not good you know, to do. And I think like for me, I, I always wanted the Marines as almost to be like a university course, I didn't really think about it as a long-term career. So I never really said, like, I never was one of those blokes who's like, I'm going to do 22 years, I'm going to do my full career, I'm going to get a pension, like, you know, this and that. I kind of just went, like, if I join and I do over four years, that's about what you do at uni, wouldn't you? you know, maybe three years at uni. So I kind of, like, was the lessons and the education I can have from life experience of that, you know, will be massive into, into the next world. And, yeah, so that was kind of, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the camaraderie that, you know, it's in the, the, the discipline side of it, the lessons that you do learn. And like, what's been quite nice for me there actually, which is really cool is over the last three years, like sort of building this business and, you know, helping guys in, in certain different elements with certain different things, you realize how much you know, 
like you know you realize what training they've actually given you and and, and the life skills that you do have without even knowing it um which is really funny actually because you think like i think it costs a quarter of a million pounds just to put a Royal Marine through training if they start at one point and don't fail until the very end. So they, they don't, not, not even if you get injured or you have to have extra curricular or anything else. Um, so you look at that and you think, fucking hell, yeah, actually, I see why. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I love, mate. I did love yeah. that, that side of it, really. It seems to me it's the it's the sense of accompl- accomplishment that you got from it. Because, well, what was the old um, advert for the Marines? 99.9% need not apply. And I think yeah. it, it seemed to me that you put it in front of yourself the biggest, most intimidating target you could, and you went for it. And it was that sense of accomplishment that gave you yeah. that personal fulfillment. I had this chat with someone the other day like um big thing with that though is that like it is it is fucking hard like it is genuinely hard like it is mad when oh you're... i don't doubt that yeah but it doesn't actually feel that difficult when you're doing it now the reason why i say that is because one you do not realize how fit you are like you don't like like as in as you're traveling through this there are 30 40 you know in some like troops probably 60 odd books i think it was like I can't remember. Look at that. What it must have been. What I don't know. There's probably twenty odd blokes there. So I'm just looking at a pass out photo. Like I think there's like twenty people, maybe maybe less that pass out our troop. But anyway, what I mean by that is like when you're in that group of twenty, like everyone else is the same fitness level. So you're like, well, it's just normal. Like of course it is just normal. So like it is those increments that just happen every day that you don't even realize. Like you start training and you're a level of fitness. You finish training, you're a level, but you don't know how fit you are it, and, until you sort of like. Until you start putting it against other things. Like I, I went running with my dad when I first sort of passed out. <laughs> and I, I when I was a kid, like I could never keep up with my dad. Like my dad is still he's a fucking really good runner now, like really good runner. Like um I, I mean he is 68 this year and he does 5k in like 24 minutes, 25 minutes, something like it's that. 68. Like, yeah, yeah, he's 68. Yeah, yeah. May said, that's is probably fit. around my time. Right. yeah he is, he is like he does it every week and he, he like he, he'll literally just text me times like oh i'm in this age group now i'm in this age group now i've beat this person now that you know was previous whatever um but yeah he he is yeah, that is all he does though he doesn't do anything else but just that yeah, yeah, yeah. um but yeah no he, he is a funny guy but anyway like when i was younger i never used to be able to keep up with him and i remember being like fucking hell like you know this is rapid and then we went on a run and so it came out and i i think i literally did like so he did like I was like, oh, I'll do 10K, you do five. Um, and I did, I passed him twice. I remember being like, fuck, like, um, but yeah, anyways, it, you don't, what I mean though is that like when you're in that training environment, when you're going through that higher purpose, that challenge, you don't realize it because you're making those little one percentages every day. And it, and it, and it just kind of gets to that point. Um, yeah, that's, that, was, that was the biggest thing for me is having that big target set. I mean, yeah. I know that... Um, Obviously, a lot of your a lot of your um, stuff is running, isn't it? It's based around running, or is it? Is that, is that it's, it is largely based around running. Yeah. Uh, we feel well, that that's like that's the most accessible sport yeah. to anyone, you know. We did a we did an ultra marathon last year with with well, what what my main two goals were last year is to deadlift two hundred kilos and run an ultra marathon in the same year. So sort of like because it's a bit of a it's a bit of a um, polarizing goal. So I was mm. like, oh, that'd be quite cool. Cause then it means that I can show to my clients that like that you can pretty much do, you know, we can, we can help you do fucking anything, mm. um, which is quite cool. So I, I take both, both of those off though. So I did the 200 just midway through the year. Um, that was a fucking nightmare. It took age. It, well, it didn't take age. It, it, it took six months. It took what it was expected to take, but it, I, I must've failed that easily, easily 60, 70 times before finally just being like, well I, I am going to pick this weight up and it, it doesn't have a choice um but yeah i did that and then and then we did the ultra marathon and that was the same thing though mate we started the ultra marathon by just doing five to ten k like as a normal through that six month period of while trying to deadlift 200 kilos like because my mate one of my really good friends like i mean you should you should have drew on here because he is next level and this is what i mean about having the right people around you uh drew is aiming to do 250 so 250 kilo, kilo deadlift and then do an ultra marathon and a half Ironman within the same week, like it, it, within a year. In the same like, week. Yeah, yeah, mate, mate. He is like, I'll, I'll send you his details. Like, Drew is fit, like very fit. Like, he's just, he'll, he'll hate me saying this. He is just born 
to be what he does like he's mad but um he's actually a usn athlete as well so like we're really good mates of that but anyway like um he was the lad that i ran the ultra marathon with and it was the same like we said we did five to ten k's at the start just to sort of tick along keep you know the running uh physical fitness there and then when we got to that six month point we were like right we'll start picking up we'll start doing half uh, sorry half marathons you know like moving that level and it was just incremental and then eventually when we did finish it so we did like 50k was the ultra marathon did it's not like it's like the lowest hanging fruit of an ultra marathon you can do really isn't it because it's 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 that that one it's like, still an ultra still yeah an ultra. i know it's a weird one isn't it because it's like what is it three miles four, four miles over or something like that i don't know what it, it's, like what, it, it's like four miles over um a marathon but yeah, jesus yeah. christ a marathon is hard enough yeah i know but that's that's the point like i like obviously looking at ben and he's doing like four in a, in a week um <laughs> yeah like um but no like I, I think the same thing happened there though it's like just the increments and we kept going and then we i think we finished we did it was quite a big time it was like seven hours something we did um but like it, yeah that was it was like a trail it was a trail one we did so it was all across mm. like um random things but like it's the same thing though like it just gradually ticked over and before we know we're like oh fuck we've, we've actually completed this i've just done an ultra marathon because we were doing like every weekend we were going out on the hills like every weekend doing different training runs but it was actually really enjoyable like actually looking back same same as actually i, don't, I wouldn't say the marines training was enjoyable but it was it was nice to have a higher purpose i think that's one of the biggest things um yeah sort of really go for but um yeah man yeah like it's been cool it's like that definitely what's the biggest thing you've learned then from either the military or, or, or doing this trip or doing your ultra marathon what's you know this endurance this resilience this I'll grit what, i'll tell you what right I, i'm going to relate this to business as well because so um I'll, I'll tell a tiny story about how this um business has gone not in complete detail because obviously i don't want to fully disclose everything because it's, it's a bit well, it's a bit weird but don't I'll, give away your secrets and yeah but what i will what i will sort of give is the lessons around fitness business everything that all sort of makes sense with this so like i so i started this business 2019 i sold everything and i mean everything so like i remember i sold like the big the book mate like stick with this right but like i sold the biggest thing i remember selling is tiny little wallets like i had like stored in my attic for like 50p like i went to that level to get as, the money that i needed to obviously kick this off um went into like personal training obviously really you know put everything i could into that constantly 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 um i think i got up to the point where i had in the gym i had like 35 clients or something similar and i built quite a good business in the gym obviously that got torn apart you know with the lockdown and then and then got into the same kind of processes i actually went to a point where like i i pretty much had the same thing happen at the first lockdown you know was really undercharging for what i did kept going around in circles eventually put i think it was just shy of now it's about twenty two thousand pounds in the space of two years into a mentorship with um you know uh, i won't well, actually no, you don't you won't mind it like phil graham and 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 through that process really built the business up to a point where like it, i never expected what we would do now like we, we, we're kind of going into you know a whole different realm really so this sword here is actually a, a business award but what i'm trying to get at is that over a long journey increments just kept happening over and over again until eventually it was like gone from fucking having to sell all my clothes pr pretty much to then at a point where you're like you know you're with quite a high business mentor you know um winning awards for you know the, the, the business that you've achieved but like what i'm trying to get at here is the biggest lesson i've learned from anything i've ever done anything that has been a long journey or difficult or hard is that ultimately you have to treat every single day like it is that initial warm-up now when, when, when everyone goes from a run right we all fucking hate most of us will probably you know mad people won't we all hate the first mile don't we we all hate that first mile and it's incredibly difficult now the way i actually passed my 30 miler as in physically passed it is i kept telling myself it was the first mile now the reason why i say that is because we all know once that first mile's over and that warm-up process is, is dealt with you feel a lot better so anytime the biggest lesson i've ever learned is anytime anything's incredibly difficult you want to give up just tell yourself it's that first mile and it will get slightly better as you go forward tell yourself you're warming up now that's what i sort of look at in all all ways of life like the first time a baby gets up and goes to walk it is going to fucking plow on its face right you know you you, you probably definitely seen that with just having kids like I, um becca's uh sister's got a, a small um small boy called roman and you, you saw what happened the first time he learned to walk but like he doesn't give up though 
He doesn't give up. He just keeps going and going and going. And he probably hates it in his mind. He's saying, fucking hell, this is balling. Why don't I just stood up? You've got to consider that the reason being is he's just ignorant to the fact that he has the option to fail. And he just keeps, you know, going and going and going and telling himself he's been warming up. He's getting to that process. So I think subconsciously and physically, if you just tell yourself that anytime it's difficult, anytime it's, there's a problem, just say, this is only the warm up. It's going to get slightly better as I go forward. That is going to keep you progressing in any way, shape or form. And like, if you do that, you the, the possibility of where you're going to head towards is absolutely endless of what you could build. If you just constantly tell yourself that, because there will be different levels of when that principle is going to come into play, but in a different manner. Like, you know, talking about it in, I'll talk about it in a fitness industry because it makes more sense. But like your first mile is in like the first mile you ever run is going to be like that. Whereas the first time you do a marathon is ever going to be like that. The first time you do a double marathon might be like that. And there's always going to be different levels of what you go to. Um, but I, I think that's good though. I quite like that idea. I don't know about you. I like the idea that there is always going to be a struggle at different points. Um, what, what do you think, Terry, about that? <laughs> well, do you know what? I was uh, just listening to that. And I think you've broken down two ideas and you've merged them into one. Yeah. And the two ideals I think you've done is you've you've broken down this intimidating challenge. So, yeah. for example, this 30 miler, what you've done is you've broken that down into 31 milers, yeah. one single milers, which is achievable. They are achievable chunks. Of course, you can run one mile. You know, you've trained. I can run one mile and you just add it up, add it up, add it up. Yeah. And the second thing you've done is you've understood understood that bad times never last yeah on the on the the same coin on the other side of the same coin good times never last but it's that understanding that that scenario that you're in it 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 will pass and things will get better um and you've merged those two the achievable goals and the understanding that bad times won't last merge them two into this one little concept which you've got you could you could you could trademark that that's the alex gribben trademark yeah do you know what it is though so for endurance in, in general, okay, so like, do, have you ever played computer games or video games or anything? Oh, come your... on. Of course I have. Good Everyone man. has. Come oh, on. Man. GTA, man. If I gave you a video game and you never failed a level, right? So you never failed a level in GTA. You never failed a mission. GTA is actually quite a good example because it's quite expansive. Never failed a mission. Never got killed. Um, nothing ever went wrong. Wasn't difficult in the slightest. Would you be fulfilled or would it be boring as fuck? Yeah. Yeah. That is life. Yeah, that is a huge thing I say to my clients. Like, if I if I don't ever give you any challenges, you never ever, it's never difficult. The whole time in your life, it's easy. No one, because realistically, right, they are going to at some point. None of your relatives ever die. You never get any form of job loss. Nothing ever goes wrong. I, I'm, it wouldn't be good. It would be boring as fuck. Like, yeah. it would be so boring. So like you say about those bad times, I just say to the lads, I'm like, you do realize you're just in a fucking game anyway. You're just in one big game where these things need to happen. And like a huge thing that um, I actually listened to a couple of guys that I've been, I wouldn't say mentored off, but like have kind of, um, I've heard from. So like they've done lectures for me. It's like Joe Parrish, really good, like coaches coach. Um, he, he, he coaches guys. And he, he talks about the fact that like challenges aren't happening for you. Sorry, challenges aren't happening to you. They're happening for you. And like, we are all like going to go through challenge, like in any shape or form at some point that like we are all going to go through a challenge because like, it's unrealistic to think that you are going to go for the next 80 to hundred years without something going wrong. Like, and I think when you kind of realize that and you kind of get into your mind that like, you know, your, your, your grandparents, your parents, your kids, at some point, these people are going to die. Like there are also going to be job losses. There are also going to be economies that crash. There are also going to be housing markets that crash. All these things are going to happen. They're literally just ready. They're waiting and ready. But when you think if they're going to happen for me so that I have a challenge to overcome, I have an ability to build. So when you look back at your life, you know, when you are led there, I'm not saying led on your deathbed because I don't think that happened. I think you just die. But you're led like, like at this position, thinking about all these things, thinking about all the stuff that's gone on. You're going to go, fucking hell I got through all that I did all that and I'm at this point like and and, and the thing with that like you said Terry is like if you're still fucking breathing uh, you know I think a lot of us like we put ourselves down because we're not achieving massive higher goals but like realistically if you've got a fucking if you've got roof right now like a roof that actually works you are able to feed yourself and you can breathe in and out of your nose and mouth or one of the two in some way shape or form because some people might not be able to do both you are doing all right like that that's the end of the, the the rest of the stuff that you're sort of aiming for yes you should have that in place 
But you have to understand that is more entertainment than anything. Like those goals should be that they entertain you and you should be happy that you can go up against those challenges. Because ultimately that's, you know, it, it reframes the way you think about it, I think, really. Um, yeah, I know that's quite a lot. That's a lot. I've just thrown it. No, <laughs> do you know what? You, yeah. you were talking about um, without struggle, that there, that there would be no meaning and you wouldn't be happy. And oh. I, I actually read um, Darren Brown's book, Happiness. Uh, I don't know if you read that. It's really good. It's, it's about yeah. stoicism mainly. Um, but there's a graph in it and it, it's not his. It's come from some philosopher and I can't remember the name. But there's a graph and it's it's. Uh, a line graph and the chart is going at a 45 degree angle and he's saying this is your happiness chart above it is challenges that are too hard and below it are challenges that are not challenging enough and happiness is a found along that 45 degree angle you have to have something to challenge if it's too hard you'll you don't like it if it's too uh, easy there's no fulfillment you have to challenge yourself at a level just push yourself slightly above your the level that you can do i suppose it's called the growth zone isn't it um again out your comfort zone really and that's where happiness is found you know, Oli talks about it a lot, like constantly getting out of your comfort zone, because there mm. will be like we, we don't we all become comfortable with things over a long period once we've done them enough. You know, like I always talk about the fact that um, mate, this, this could be, we, we could go on for hours about this, by the way. Like um, I always talk about the fact that when you first get into a car, you're not a race driver, like you're not a Formula One driver. Like the first day you get into a car, you're like, oh, I'm a fucking Formula One driver now. You probably <laughs> would, it probably wouldn't go very well. Like it just wouldn't go well. But like and, and you're going to stall the car. That you are going to stall it but after a while once you develop these skills and you've got to a point where you know you're, you're competent that will happen over time and repetition now that's the same thing when it comes to putting yourself out of your comfort zone like you don't just put yourself out of your comfort zone once and go oh i did something that was slightly challenging and oh, i was a bit difficult and oh, i remember i went for that job promotion or I asked that girl out or i you know maybe did it that run or i did this or i did that like it has to be over and over again because like you say that 45 degree angle that what's out of your comfort zone there won't be in the slightest out of your comfort zone five years later. Like if you said to a guy who's running a multi-million pound, you know, business that's making 10 million a year, his comfort zone, his, um, sorry, his outside of his comfort zone might be in 10 years, we want you to be doing a hundred million in, in 10 more years, we want you to do, uh, be doing a billion. You know, imagine if he's doing, if he's doing a hundred million and you say to him, oh, I want you to make a million this year. He'd be like, well, that's more than achievable. Like, why would I, why, why? that's not even, that's not even uncomfortable for me to do. Now, I know that's a big example, but what I'm saying by that is, is that, that that is the same as when someone goes, I'm going to do my first mile and then they do a marathon and they're like, oh, well, you know, um, I'll do your first mile. It's like, you have to keep raising that bar because just like in fucking GTA, the levels get harder as you go. Your level one is the learning process. It's the baseline of what you're doing. Like, you know, you're learning, even like Mario Kart, you learn what you do in the car level level 20 is going to be a completely different level but like it's nice that that's i actually genuinely sat down a really good chat with someone about it like in business it's so cool in business and this is why i love like running this is like that there are always levels to this like no matter what you do there was always an expanse you can go higher i would actually hate having a ceiling like i would hate someone being like oh this is the cap this is all you can go towards once you get there like that's it because i'd be like i was boring as fuck now and that's the same when it comes to like physical fitness when it comes to your job role when it comes to like your, your kids your family like and also what what will happen sometimes is you'll go up to a certain point have to come back down because something happens and then have to work back up um you know that's just how it works like that's just how things are going to go like there's no sticking point there's no point where you'll just be sat there because it just doesn't happen does it yeah um, and, the, and yeah you, as you were sort of alluding to that challenges are personal to the person I, I said this in the last past podcast actually is a, a challenge to mo farah is going to be very different to a challenge to my nan um yeah you know 100%. but but to, to the person the challenge is still the same it's still challenge it puts them in that growth zone um so you, you have to pick something that's suitable for you um and not not other people and the reason why the challenge is different I would say, and we, we, I did a lecture about this, is, is talking about experiences that they've previously had. Like you said, the reason why Mo Farah is going to go, oh, a marathon, yeah, and, like, whereas mm. Nan, or my Nan, I know, would go, a marathon, fucking hell. Yeah. Like, maybe the experiences they've previously had within that period. So it's, like, a, a huge thing. Um, I actually heard Gaz, um, like, he, he, also, he talks about it. He, so he runs his own coaching company as well. He's, like, quite good mates with Ollie. Um, he actually came in to Dan Hancock's program and delivered us a lecture. He talks about like, and I think this was great. I thought this was great. 
um, I'll send you his page as well, like, because he, he would come on this, he'd love it. But like, um, the, what is it? So you can't be experienced without having experience is, experience is. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? So like, for instance, like you say, with running, you can't be an experienced runner if you haven't fucking run. <laughs> it sounds obvious, but yeah, like, yeah, like, it's so true. Like, 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 I say it to a lot of my lads in life. I'll be like, well, look, like, um, oh, I can never get that job, Rob. Uh, have you tried? <laughs> well, well how do you know then? <laughs> like, oh, n- oh, I'll never be able to be a manager. Oh, it's too much work. I- I- have you gone through that experience? No. Why are you telling yourself you can't then? Just go have that experience. Just, just go give it a go. Just go give mm-hmm. it a go. And like, and like Ollie actually talks about it. So obviously I do. I, I probably didn't say, I didn't say that at any point. So obviously I work for, well, now I do um, have started to work for, obviously, so the, so the breakpoint events and some of those teams, which have been brilliant, to be fair. Just so that's around. Ollie Ollerton, isn't it? From yeah, the SAS is, programme thing. SAS, SAS thing. And obviously this is his brand, like, about Ready Fuel. And, like, it's, it's great to actually be part of those guys. But um, he talks about it quite a lot as well. Like, looking back at experiences you've had in life, and, like, when you get a little bit older, so, like, you know, as you head towards maybe 30s, 40s, even 50s, and just sort of picking apart, like, what did you enjoy and what did you not? And then go, right, I like that. I'll, I'll do more of that. And I'll, mm. I'll sort of progress that forward and I'll push that harder. Or I didn't really enjoy that. So I'll either give it to someone else that they do with it if it's a job that has to be done or I'll just wipe it out altogether. And, and you know, progress in that manner. It just makes sense, doesn't it? Um, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> what, what's been your biggest challenge or lowest moment? in, in and, and this could be, yeah, ever, you know? And, and how okay. did you push through and sort of how did you get past that point? 2019 back end uh the gym shut and i remember being at a point where i had built that business so i'd left the marines told everyone i was going to start as a personal trainer really had that sort of pride level um back end back end of 2020 pretty much got to a point because i hadn't been in a business a year i was giving no support so as in like you know when everyone else is getting what do you call it um oh, i can't remember like furlough like business yeah. owners getting the equivalent of furlough didn't get any of that um, didn't get literally just got nothing. So I had, I had like nothing. So it was like, oh, right. Well, you've just got to fucking do something. I had at least, I think like 20 of my clients go, yeah, I'm left or, or refunded or whatever. I remember being sat in this flat and like bearing in mind, obviously I've got a mortgage on this flat and being like, what am I going to fucking do? Like genuinely what I'm going to do. And like, I, I drank really heavily that first night was like, just, just like fucking buried my head. And then it was like, right. Okay. Proactively, what can we start to focus on? luckily luckily as fuck i actually had phil in my corner at that point and it was like going through the circles of like what can you do what can't you do fucking focus on the can then let's get on with it i remember mate i was i was fully in the locker then i'm not gonna lie like it was a point where i was like i'm i'm i I was talking about getting sales jobs in car salesman i was like oh you know i'm just gonna get a car sales job and and fucking that might work out (laughs) like i remember being like all right okay um or like you know physically just 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 things just didn't go well for a first like at least do you know what alex like this just goes to show like you you're a coach right you coach on health fitness mindset well-being you know all about this and these these struggles these challenges can affect you this this can affect anyone you know yeah, so I, so throughout that year, that start of that first lockdown, that first period, fully I was ready to be like, right, so I either have to go get another job, I have to shut down what I, you know, left the Marines for as a passion, that's me gone, that was probably the, probably the lowest moment I've ever had, and at least the first, the first lockdown, first three months, I remember being like, you know, eating pizzas, just really just going quite heavily downhill, got to a point where I was like, you need to fucking do something about this, I hired my own fitness coach, which it was, was at the time, and I had him for two years, which was Isaac Lewis, absolutely fantastic he got me back on my own feet to get to that point and like I, i'm quite a big advocate of like i think you should you should always buy what you sell so in the sense of like if you're selling a service as a coach you should have some form of capacity of a coach or people who help you because i, I don't want to be too blunt about it but like you, you kind of have to do what you would tell your clients to do so i was struggling as fuck like if you're not struggling, then obviously maybe you don't. But like I was struggling as fuck, so I was like, right, well, I obviously need to buy what I sell. I'll, I'll go and hire a coach to sort my own fitness out, keep me accountable. Um, and that was great. So that excitement like, got me back up to a point. And then same with the business, you know, had the direction from Phil, had the clarity. And I'm not saying that money is always going to solve every problem, but majority of the time that you know all money is is an energy resource that's all it realistically is like it's just an asset it's a digital asset nowadays it's not even a physical asset that we hold and ultimately if you need a service to get you to a different point then obviously releasing that digital asset is potentially what you need to do 
Um, so obviously I did that with obviously Isaac and Phil and that got me out of that hole. And obviously now we're sort of at where we are. But like, yeah, mate, 100 percent like you say, like, you know, I, I think a huge thing that actually can happen as well, potentially with a lot of coaches or people who have been professional athletes or, or, or are high standard in the military or whatever, is that like you kind of sit on this pride. And, and a lot of people think that, oh, you know, like Tyson Fury is a massive example of it, that, oh, because you've been that person or you've been at that level, you won't have the same problems as everyone else. Like Tyson Fury is a great example, like you said, dude, of like, um, you know, like he, he's, a, he's a very high level athlete and he still fucking completely fell off, you know, all these problems, all these drug addictions, like it, it happens to everybody. It's not just a small minute group of people, like, or, mm. you know, someone special, it will happen to everybody. Um, yeah, it's mad. <laughs> but yeah, well, I hope people can take comfort from that. So when they are suffering, yeah. I hope that they can take comfort from the fact that they're not on their own. Yeah. Everyone goes through this, even the people at the top, even coaches like yourself, even Tyson Fury, who, who yeah. he's, he was at the pinnacle of the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it I, happens I to what, everyone. I, I would argue the point, and, and I, I know that some people might disagree with this because obviously multimillionaires don't have the same problems as everyone else. I get that, right? I would argue the point, though, is that at that level, I'm not saying I'm anywhere near that level in the slightest, by the way, massively not, but like at the level of, say, like Tyson Fury, or those types of people, I probably reckon it's worse. Now, the reason being is that you you have access to a lot of things. I like, you know, you have when you do that, I imagine when you have access to that amount of money, nothing's off bar. So actually, suddenly, like you can fucking throw yourself very aggressively the other way. Like, you know, like he, yeah. for him to buy, drugs, alcohol, you know, all these things was probably very accessible, very quickly, very easily. And actually probably was a lot, you know, simpler than it might have been for someone who's maybe not, you know, at that point, I'm not saying that it's, it's you know, it's good or bad, but like, yeah. And I think the pressure and the the expectation of that can be an issue as well. And, and, and it's a bit mad really, but yeah, mate, hundred percent, like everyone, everyone is going to deal with the same problems. And actually like the only difference with someone who's maybe, deemed to be more successful because sometimes it's like you have to understand what success means to you not to everyone else like it, it is that they might just be able to have you know re really money is no I, I don't really deem that success anymore because it doesn't make sense to, it doesn't really make sense it might mean slightly different levels of a business and slightly different levels to deliver a service to people but ultimately like if you're a rent oh, I'm, fucking, I'm going off on a tangent here, but like if you're running a shit business and you make a load of money, there's no fucking point because eventually you just go out of business anyway. But if you're running a good business and you make a lot of money, then obviously that's fine, as in you deliver a good service. Um, but I think like a, a big thing that you have to understand is that no matter what point you're at in life or no matter what financial situation or whatever, there's always going to be the same issues. Like there's, we are humans, we are all built the same, we all have the same brain, we all have the same heart. Like there's no real difference to how we're fundamentally built. We might just have slightly different routines and lives. And, and, and it is going to always be the same. Like there are a lot more similarities across the board, across the globe, than there are differences. And, and, and yeah, mate, it's massive. This has gone oh. quite deep today. No, it's yeah, deep. It's, it's, deep, it's a deep podcast. I should have warned you. Yeah. Um, but I'd say here's, a, here's a prime um, example, actually. You'll probably see it in the news at the moment. But Johnny Depp and, and Amber Heard are in court at the oh, moment. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Johnny Depp, right? He is the A-list of A-listers. He's the biggest movie star, one of the biggest movie stars in the world. He's probably got millions of pounds. And look at the struggles that he's going. Like Johnny Depp has the same problems with women that yeah. we do as well. <laughs> and drink and drugs as well like that. It is not, it's, it's not, it's for everyone, these problems. Everyone deals with them. Um, I just, I want to, I'll move us on quickly as well. So yeah. I want to get onto the mental resilience side of, uh, of what yeah, you do yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So I want to know what is, what's your definition and understanding of mental resilience and how, yeah. wh where do you place it in the, in the importance or the, you know, the, the hierarchy, the importance of well-being, health and life? Right. I'm going to, I'm going to say a really Chad saying right now, really Chad saying, but it, 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 it validates the point. It makes sense really. Like, so I think that a huge thing about having a good mentality isn't, you know, there's a really good saying from Rocky Balboa, isn't there, in, in that film. It's like, it's not about how many times you can hit or how hard you can hit. It's how many times you can get knocked down and keep getting up. Um, but like that, that genuinely, I think, is what is built. Like you, you, to build a strong mindset, to build something where you know you can continue moving forward and you can progress in some way, shape or form, is just how much shit you can take. Now, 
I am basically, my job pretty much, Terry, is, is to fucking facilitate shit in a controlled environment. I.e., like, if I give my lads challenges to do and they perform at a challenge and win or fail, at some point they will be building calluses in their mind that then can progress them forward. I.e., the first time um, Chris came to me, didn't want to do a home workout because he wasn't really sure, a bit nervous about it, a bit of anxiety. But as we built the calluses on that, just like the first driving lesson, didn't really want to do it, a bit nervous, a bit panicking. You're all going to have that. Eventually, once we build the calluses on that and we've facilitated those challenges for a longer period, you will have got to a point where what you previously thought would be difficult is no longer. And I think that in general life, the physical fitness can um, correlate to so many different things, especially when it comes to mentally, i.e., if you were nervous the first time you went into the gym and eventually you become accustomed to that, the first time you go into a new job interview, you will be a bit nervous, but eventually you'll become accustomed to that. And the experience is what will build you mentally, I feel. Um, yeah, that's what I think the biggest thing would be. Like my, I'd say my definition of mental resilience is someone that can handle more and more challenges and keep moving forward with it. I think, I think that's it. That's, that's, yeah. That is resilience in a nutshell. It's, yeah. it's not a strength, it's an endurance. It's to keep yeah. moving forward. Um, I, we had Dr. Colin Robinson on the podcast recently, cracking podcast listeners. It, honestly, if you listen to one, go back and listen to that one. But he was, say, he was saying there's a difference between mental strength and mental resilience. And mental strength is dealing with the problem in the moment and the now. But it's yeah. that resilience that keep, you know, can you do it again tomorrow? Can yeah. you do that again tomorrow? And it's and it's through these experiences and challenging ourselves that we build that experience in order to, to do that. Yeah. How important do you think challenges like um, setting yourself a goal? You know, like you know, you did your ultra marathon, you did your two hundred crown, uh, two hundred kg deadlift. How important do you feel that is in building mental resilience? I think I think you should always have something that's an aim. It doesn't necessarily have to always be, like for instance, like obviously last year was quite some big aims. My 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 my, my main aim this year is 12, 12 climbs. Do 12 big peaks. That's it. Like not massive peaks as in like, you know, nothing like um uh, obviously NIMS has just done, but like more in the sense of just do 12 mountain climbs. So obviously over the year we've stretched them out and that's more just because I enjoy it. It's it's something I can do. But like I think you should always have something that you're trying to work on mainly just because it gives you a sense of fulfillment and sense of progress and obviously mental resilience as we said is built by your ability to keep progressing forward now if you don't know where you're going then actually that's very difficult to do but like you, you're just getting these challenges that just come along it's going to be huge and I also think like it, it just gives you it just gives you something to fucking enjoy going towards like you know it, it, that's that's the biggest thing it's like you, you you've always got some form of entertainment then like you know, when you look at a pro football team, the reason why they have cups is because then they've got something to fucking aim for. Like if, you, if you've not got your own personal cup to aim for, or your personal thing to have as fulfillment, and it doesn't have to be an ultra map, it doesn't have to be a 200 kilo, it doesn't have to be joining the Marines. It could just be, I want to be able to do my first 5K and, and not feel out of breath at the end of it and do it in a set time or something along those ways. Like a lot of my lads, it's, it's we, we start small and we work up. No, it's not always about like, I don't, I, no one joins and I go, right, well, within six weeks, you will be running ultra marathons and fucking snatching 400 kilos. <laughs> it's, it's, just not, it's just about, like you say, having that ability to, you know, build those layers to it, really. Um, yeah. It makes it enjoyable. <laughs> what, what motivates you? In fact, you said something at the start of this. You, you mentioned that uh, you joined the Marines to give a, bit, a big fuck you to yeah. the people who doubted you. You got your English GCSE because you wanted to prove the teachers wrong. How is, is proving people wrong a big aspect of, um, of your what, motivation? What I do, the reason why I do what I do is because there's been probably, I'd say, three points that have been very low like we kind of talked about with the lockdown. There's a couple of other bits that have happened that I won't go into because it's quite a long story to go through. But like, I probably was at the point where like easily three times in my life where I've been like, I probably probably would be better off not here. Um, really? Yeah, mate. That yeah. bad? Yeah. And I think, I think for me, the realisation of being at that point is why I do what I do. Because in my mind, like it fulfills a purpose for me to have to be it. Because if I, if I, if I know, I know what that feels like, I really do know what that feels like. And I'm not saying that everyone will be on that same level. However, there will be lads who are on the trajectory without knowing it. I.e., like we mm -hmm. talked about at the start of the podcast, when you, when you start to have those things happen, 
and you start to you know go to that point like you can get to a point where you, you just you might only be a couple of beers and you've been divorced and then eventually it's you are at that point but the whole the whole reason i'm saying is because i know that if i can have a positive effect on a small group of blokes when i say small i mean tens of hundreds of thousands that will eventually transition into other people also having the same positive effects I like if so I, currently I think we've got 35 blokes in the in, in the program at the moment right so like we're just over like 30 something but anyway like those lads I know will have mates that are positively affected by them helping them like I see it you know they, they send me messages all the time those mates will go forward and help other blokes those mates will go forward and help other blokes like even like a father who's got three kids if he's joined the program and he's improved himself and therefore he feels like he's on top of the ball and those three kids then get positive affected they'll go and affect three three other children and so on and so forth and like i think for me the biggest thing that motivates me is that without really knowing it in some way capacity we are changing the world and i i feel like a massive thing in this country is hopelessness in blokes and if, if in some way shape or form we can have a positive impact on that even by like one percent that is what's going to drive me to keep moving forward. Because like, like I say, mate, like I, I fully ripped myself off when I first left school. As in, like, I was like, nah, you, you will never accomplish anything. Like there is absolutely no point, like pretty much you being here. And then there were certain other points with tons of other stuff. Like I won't go into it. But like if you follow my page, you'll know, because I've talked about it really detailed in there. I don't want to go into it like half cuffed. Um, but I was arrested in 2020. No, sorry. No, I was arrested in 2015. Sorry, that's the opposite. Um, a lot of stuff I went through there, especially with being arrested and being in the military and like fully wrote myself off then, like, you know, it was like, oh, there's tons of reasons why. But anyway, what I'm trying to get at is that like the crusade and the mission that we're on is one of the biggest things that really drives me to keep this moving forward. And like I say, we always, I always keep telling myself, like, you're only just getting started. You're only just getting started. Like you're only just, you know, sort of keeping this going. And like, I think a huge thing for me as well to constantly keep doing stuff like ultra marathons, big deadlifts, you know, you know, I did obviously the deny challenge before I now work on it. Um, and like the two day SF events and stuff and like all that stuff is because it builds my credibility of what I can do, which therefore helps other guys to realize what they could accomplish. And therefore, in some way, capacity will keep pulling those lads off that sort of hopeless state, really. Um, that's a long winded answer. Yeah, no, no. I, and do and you know what? It's in my eyes, it's it's yeah. the perfect answer because. Yeah. purpose and meaning is honestly the most important thing i feel uh, th that you need for a healthy well-being yeah. the, the people yeah. that i see struggle with uh, health well-being are always the people that are lost they they have sort of no direction and as you say this isn't six months down the line it isn't a year it could be several years down the line but yeah. that's when it's going to catch up with you these things and, and i think as well like we're, we're in a society mate where like it's basically tick box and once you tick the boxes that's apparently what should make you happy and and it doesn't like it doesn't no. you know, you get get a Range Rover a vote, get a new build house, get married and fucking sit on a mortgage. And that is it. Your purpose is to pay this mortgage off for the bank. Mm. But after a while, people be like, what the fuck am I doing? And that's it. Then you're like, you're like, well, what am I doing in my life? And like what we try to do is just very simply just give lads stuff they fucking enjoy working at. Like, oh, right. OK, like, Chris, let's get you to fucking get a fucking, you know, aces on your serve. Like, let's get the physical ability to go into this. Oh, I used to, you know, I, I, I'd like joined recently, right? And he was like, oh, I used to love canoeing as a kid. Let's get you back to a point where you're confident to go back in a canoe because you feel physically fit. Like, and, and a lot of my stuff will be literally getting my guys to be like, right, plan your work life, plan your health and fitness routines, and then plan your fucking life. Like, actually plan what you're going to do with, you know, the weekend instead of just pissing it up. Like, yeah. and, and that's it. Like you say, given that healthy, happier, like purposeful direction of what you're doing is massive and like and it's enjoyable like it's just enjoyable to watch guys like grow and like you know just look in different subjects of what they're doing but um yeah mate that, that, that's a huge thing for me it's not and like some days it's not going to be as driven like there are going to be some days where i think oh, God, i can't like why am i dealing with this or why am i dealing with that and like it's going to happen but you know overall it's just like you say having that higher ability to to progress forward but um yeah, yeah I, th I think for me like my 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 aim is like to, to have me this as a brand and like where we are and like everything we do within 10 years to be like the go-to set of people that will help you know especially in the uk like helping blokes who have suffered with mental health depression addictions all these things are really a compass of, of what they can achieve um and it's kind of like i always just think about what we're doing now is laying the foundations really 
Um, but yeah, yeah, that's the overall sort of goal, really. <laughs> and what, yeah, what, what would be your advice for someone who's uh, perhaps stuck in this rut and perhaps, you know, looking at you and fact thinks, right, yeah, I want to set a goal, I want to change my life, I want to find my purpose. Uh, what nothing would be your biggest advice? Nothing will change ever unless you change something i.e. if you're currently drinking every night, you're taking drugs, you're doing whatever, and, and I'm not saying just drugs because obviously that's something else. We, we refer a lot of guys out to counsellors. That's a big thing we do. Um, and they deal with that side of things. But what I'm saying is that like, if you're in a certain habit that you do not like and you change nothing, you will keep doing that. There's absolutely no doubt. If you kind of cuff it and kind of slightly change a few things and maybe do things that you know you've already failed at, it will continue that way. To change the direction of where you're going, you need to change a lot of different processes and thinkings and, and, and the thoughts and the communities, the people you have around you. So like a massive thing for me instantly, as soon as lads join the program and they've committed financially, physically, emotionally and mentally to what we're going to do with them, the biggest thing that they suddenly get is when you've got a group of people around you who've done exactly the same as that and they've had to go through those proactive steps to really understand why they want to change and why they need to change, it's suddenly completely different because you're around a different group, you're around a different ethos, you're around a different society of people and that's going to progress you forward. Like, um, have you ever heard of the Dickens process by Tony Robbins? I don't know if you've heard of that. No. Um, but like Charles Dickens, you know Charles Dickens, the story of Charles Dickens where, um, sorry, the, the story of the... Um, the ghosts of Christmas past, present and future. And he talks about, this is what you've done in your past. This is a current present position we're in. And this is our future. We carry on doing what we're doing now. I talk to my lads a lot when they first join about that, because it gives them the realization of why they need to change. You know, if, if you're currently, because we often sugarcoat what we're doing as not that bad. Oh, I'm only a couple of stone overweight. You know, I've only progressed that in the last couple of years. And oh, actually, you know, I, I'm not doing this that, and the other. When you actually start to realize like the, the negative implications of you keep going down the direction road that you're in and and it does, does sometimes sound really like it's over dramatized but it isn't it is mainly true because it's the direction you've started you're in and you are going to be progressing that will give you the reason of why you need to change now the flip side of that as well is to look at the positive implications of change because the biggest thing about your brain is when you say like say if you say like this is just an example right if you say i'm going to quit watching porn all your brain will hear is watching porn. It doesn't hear the word quit. Whereas if you say, I am going to start to live a more positive, healthier relationship with my partner, with my life, that's a better way to put it. So what I'll often do with my guys is get them to understand why they need to change to begin with and what the negative implications are if they don't, but also flip that and get them to understand the positives they can work towards and why it will actually help them and the reasons why they can then progress that forward. For instance, right, like, um, do you want me to go into this if we've got time? It's yeah, quite go quick. On. yeah, go on. For instance, like one of my clients, the biggest things I said to him at the start is um, the, the, there was a lot that was going on with him. I won't mention names. It is public and people can watch it. But like the biggest thing we talked about is the fact that if he didn't stop doing what he was doing within the space of five years, someone else would be walking his daughter down the aisle when she was older because he probably would be dead. And, and, and the realisation of that made him think, fuck me, like I actually need to make sure that I'm still healthy and alive so that eventually I can actually be here to walk my daughter down the aisle and actually be there as a father. Like that's a very strong reason why you need to change. So that established that point. Flips are that though. The positive implications are he's actually trained to run his first marathon. And you might know that if you watch my page, who this is, but like the, the flip side of that is actually how much more energy would you have in the now and forgetting five, 10 years when you know, you're walking your daughter down the aisle, in five, 10 years now, how much more energy would you have with work? How much better would your sex life be? How much better would your, um, you know, your, um, your uh, sorry, social life be? How much better would everything be if we're actually in positive habits, routines and structures? Like, and the positives of that are also a driving factor. So I think to, to sort of round that off, if you're not happy with where you currently are in life, step one, you need to fucking change something. Because if you change nothing, expect nothing to change. Like, you know, what, what's that, 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 that process where it's like insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expect a different result. That's right, yeah. And then That's step, it. Number, step number two is understand why the negatives will happen. It would understand the negatives if you don't change. And step number three, and this is probably most important, is understand the positives of change because then you'll be like, wow, I actually want that. And that's then going to be a proactive work towards. Um, yeah. And I mean, I'm not saying you have to join my program, like you can join anybody's, but just fuck can do something yeah <laughs> like that's the worst yeah. thing i hate the worst thing i hate is when i speak to guys or i speak to girls and like 
some guys I will have conversations with and I will, I will stick at it because it's just my mentality. Like I'll have chats with lads for a year and they'll be telling me week in, week out, I haven't done anything about this. I haven't done anything about that. Oh, I can't afford this, but I've spent, you know, 20, 30 pound every two weeks or well, every two minutes on beer and so on and so forth. And I'm like, sometimes I, I have actually said to people like, here's a program that's cheaper because I'm not going to say we're the cheapest, like we aren't because of how immersive what we do. Here's a program that's cheaper. Please do sign up for this right now just to do something. Yeah, um, yeah that, that would be my best advice is, is just find something. Do you know what, um, in the world of sort of uh, health and well-being, I mean, this is uh, sort of why Rockman is, exists as well as a sort of counter argument to this, but I hate the term, it's okay to not be okay. You, you hear this all the time for health and well-being. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, let me explain it because it, can, it may sound a bit harsh, but yes, we do, we, we do all get down days. We, we have bad periods and yes, that is okay. You, you are, we all get it and you are allowed. What you're not allowed to do is stay there. Like yes. you, you, ha- you have a duty to yourself, to other people around you to make the change and to improve and get out of that hole that like you really do. I think that that saying needs to be adapted to be longer. It's not mm. okay. It's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to do fuck all about it or yeah. something a bit more PC. Because like, I think that, you tell, you tell you what, right? A huge, massive thing actually uh, the military did teach me is solution driven. Like you cannot just present the OC or the, or the fucking, you know, section commander with problems. You have to actually present them with a problem and a solution. Now, mm. I've talked about this in my story. A lot of people want to talk about mental health problems. But they do not want to talk about the solutions to those. Instead, they're happy to just plow people with drugs. And I fucking hate that because it's like, realistically, like there are tons of solutions, tiny adaptions that you can do every day proactively that cost fuck all that will help you proactively solve that problem. And actually, it's just, it's just, it's just getting people to understand that. Like, it's like, I, I think a huge reason is because the reason why this happens and the reason why we sit in those problems is because that's comfortable. Like we sit in that comfortable process. Like your, your body and your brain does not give a shit if you're happy. It does not care. It does not care. It doesn't, it doesn't. All it cares about, all your, your body cares about, like both our bodies and our brains right now only care that we're still alive. And, and what we've done previously has kept us alive. So it will continue to do that because it thinks that's going to keep us alive. It does not give a shit if you're happy. It doesn't care. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't come into play. So like the biggest thing that I try and get my guys to realize is like, you're going up against a fucking some supercomputer implanted in your body. Like you are <laughs> yeah. going to have to go up against that and actually try to change what you're doing. It's going to take time. Like it's, you know, like say it's going to take that period to do it. And like I a hundred percent agree. Like, it is okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to just not do anything. Like, it's not okay to just kind of, I, I hate this society of like expecting people to solve your problem or expecting you're entitled to something. You're entitled to fuck all. Like no one is entitled to absolutely anything. Like you, 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 you were born and that is it. Like you, you're not entitled to anything at this point. Like, you know, there's no privilege in any, any sense of the manner. Like you need to go and get these things done for yourself. And like, I know that probably, like you say, some people might get offended by that. But like at the end of the day, like I tell you what, right? If I offend ten people and they do nothing about it, but one person, and on a grander scale, one person because of us saying that does something, that's worth it to me every single time. It's job done. Because, like you said, like it, it, genuinely, like it is my, it is. I would say, as like health and fitness coaches, or as people that do our job on a probably a lot different level than other people. It is genuinely our duty to challenge people's beliefs because, because like, I, I always use the analogy. If I was to see a bloke walking towards a cliff edge and, I, and, and, and he had his music on and he was you know, walking towards a cliff edge and, and, and he had his eyes closed and he was completely you know, walking towards it. And I knew that he was going to fall off that cliff edge if I didn't stop him and pull his headphones out and maybe offend him in that direction. Would it be it is my bed bound duty to stop that bloke from walking off that cliff edge. And it might offend him by pulling his music out and stopping this sort of happy la da da process. But at the end of the day, if that's what it needs to save his life and that hard conversation, that is what's needed. Like I, I, I have genuinely had chats with lads before where they've cried on calls at the first point and it's been incredibly difficult for them to go through. But ultimately when it comes to three months, six months, some lads two years down the line and they're saying like, I finally am understanding why we needed that chat. Like it, it's worth it every time, mate. It's worth it every time. And like, it's, oh, completely. It's, it's, 
Yeah, you know completely. What? If 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 was it the, the medicine? It's something about the medicine. Is if the medicine may be horrible, but it's what's needed sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that's like the, the biggest thing is Ollie talks about it quite a lot in his sort of content about like um, that we've become kind of soft, really. And I think that sometimes I'm not saying that all oh, the hard generation understand that. Like I don't think that's you know relevant. But I think it's like sometimes when you're more challenged, that can give you more ability to to progress forward. Like I don't think it's a good idea to just sugarcoat fucking everything. Like you know, like it's like have you ever heard of that? Um, what's the story with the kid? Well, I know we're we're, we're quite strained for time, but like the story with the kid that never saw death. I can't remember what that was about. Um, I haven't heard that one. I, it was like the, the king's son or something like that. And he never saw death. And then eventually when he went out into the streets and he saw dead people, he would like scarred and panicked. And, you know, it was all this madness or whatever. But like, um, I can't remember the actual story of it, but like that really fucked him up. Whereas like, if, if you are utilized the challenge and you understand it, then eventually like actually what will happen is when big challenges do come along, you can manage it. Like, you know, cause like I, I say to a lot of my guys, like you are, you are going to have people die. Like you are going mm. to, like it is not even, it's not even a question of if, it is a certainty that is going to happen and it is going to be very fucking shit to deal with, like it is. But the reality of the situation is if you've planted your head in the sand and thought about this process and never ever challenged yourself to try to deal with it, it's going to be a lot more difficult. Like, it, like you say, like it needs to be something that we address before it comes to that too late problem like it's, it's just it's just the reality of the situation really isn't it it's, it's hard life life is fucking hard dude <laughs> life is tough man yeah life is tough and we, we have a duty to be strong enough and take our own weight you know have take on our own responsibilities in order to tackle those problems not if they happen but when they happen yes yeah, yeah. exactly that <laughs> alex gribben where can people find you uh, so, well, a few, well, yeah, pretty much the easiest place is probably Instagram, ideally. So it's like Alex Griffin Coaching, um, or if you put in the Confidence Coach, you probably, I probably will come up as there as well. Um, YouTube, obviously YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, the normal sort of stuff, um, which is all good. But yeah, that, that is that's probably one of the easiest ways. Um, full disclosure, like we only coach men. However, if there is any women that do feel like they've, you know, taken from this podcast or struggled, I'm sure obviously yourself would be able to, you know, help them as well. But like, I can always direct you obviously your way or in, in other people's way as well. We've got a, um, a free a free course as well, which is one of the biggest reasons why it baffles me why there's still people who've got problems. Because like I've got obviously a paid mentorship that we run, which is, you know, six months to a year, which is the main sort of process. And I, I literally guarantee, I literally guarantee any single guy who joins that, I will change your life, like with, without a doubt. But at the same time as that, we do also have a completely free course that you can go away and do, which is like a crass course. Which I think now is it's um, I think it's a week to a month's worth of content we've put into there. So you know, come along and join that, and then you know, get into it really, which is all cool. Um, well, if anyone yeah. wants to, yeah, if anyone wants to find all this, I'll put all the links in the show notes below, so people can uh, just click directly to it and find it all about. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, I I really enjoyed that. I thought it was fantastic. Oh, uh, deep. That's deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it, and it has to be. And you know, as we were on the last things we were talking about then. It's a really important message. I'm I'm sort of fed up of the the, the self indulgent, fluffy words of wisdom that you you get from these major corporate fitness brands out there. We need brands like ours that cut straight to the core of health and well being and give a, a really a message of true substance and value. So you can't be like that in the military. You can't like it just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not bad. Like yeah, so like I think that's a big ethos I want. It's not you know fully aggressive like there is compassion for blokes and, and people but it is at the same time with a little bit of a like, no bollocks like you said but yeah mate 100 yeah thank you very much no uh, we'll catch up soon and uh yeah no cheers yeah. thank you very much cheers dude. cheers